What up, my devil? Since I tune here with another video for you. So today I've got an S and P macro for you. Uh, don't know if I've ever done one on my YouTube channel. Pretty sure I've done them on the. I know I've done them on the Trade Devils YouTube channel, but I'm not sure if I ever posted any to this channel. At least not macro, macro, which is what I'm going to look at today for you fellas. Um, and I'm gonna start all the way out one week here. I'm just looking at the S and P, the actually S P X chart, and then we're gonna go. We're going to hone all the way down and look at the current price action. The reason I want to do this is for a couple of reasons. One, there is more than usual chatter about in the uh, the e-twit space, let's say, and just, you know, everywhere where finance, financial news, right, financial chit chat the water the financial water cooler there's more chit chat than usual about um a large scale correction coming in and we're going to zoom all the way down and see if we think that that's going to happen and if there is going to happen how deep do we think it's going to go um and uh yeah we'll see from there and in addition there's also actually a long potential that i'm already in and i'll be honest shaking in my boots on it because it's just you know a trend play and i am a trend trader um but uh yeah this one um yeah we'll see uh so yeah everybody in the world out there has you know has counted the entirety of this chart right and just about every single one i see has this as a three and a four I, you know, I won't get too in depth into the critiquing of that, but I think that that and they're using this in Elliott Wave sense, right? And just for those of you that don't know or remember, um, I am Sensei Tutum at Trade Devils. I teach Elliott Wave as a job, and um, I'm also a certified Elliott Wave analyst from the um, Elliott Wave Institute and uh, International. I'm sorry, I just calling it Institute in another video, International with the master designation. So I, I, you know, I know Elliott Wave. Um, not to say that people that count differently than, than me don't, let's just, but I'll, I'll say that I don't necessarily think that they always look at it from the same perspective as I do. But in any event, um, of course they don't because they're not me. But uh, most people have this as a big three, four, like all time scale, right? And then this is a five. And then after this, it's like the end of the times, right? I don't. I've got this as a two. This is a one ending here with a flat wave for a wave two. So anything after this, I have as a new wave. I mean, if you just look, let's go out to the monthly. If you just look at the way the chart looks relative, this looks like a three in relation to this. Yeah, people like to look at log and do all that stuff, but log is easily, let's just say it tricks people easily. It's not the real price action, right? It's a logarithmic scale, and you have to understand how those log scales work. Of course, there's there's a lot of usefulness to log scale. The The human mind thinks in log scale, and thinks since we think in log scale to uh, think that it won't apply to a financial chart, would be silly but and it does and it's quite important but i think that people apply it very incorrectly personally um at least that i see especially where they call this a three four look because it's uh, on this scale I'll look at it one two three four easy right no <laughs> look at it on this scale this is massive relative to everything else one two um and then of course look at this relative to this like look at this log Look at this, real terms, right? I just think tossing that away is silly. This looks like a three in play. So that means the force next, um, whenever that does come. And uh, we'll get, we'll definitely get down into that. Um, so this is a one, two. So that means that I would never expect, especially if this is a three, force to come all the way back down here and test this. And I see people talk about 1300, you know, 1100 SPX. It's, that's silly, in my opinion. Um, so let's get down to the three day. Um, now, since then, what do we have? I think that since then, this has been. Okay, let's just 
easily. And I'm going to pretty much do this live. I don't actually exactly remember what I have. So, but I'm pretty sure. Let's count it out. I think I had it a one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So three, four, five. And then this is three, three, five. So I had this as an inadequate. Well, it is adequate. An adequate retracement is simply something that breaks out of the final channel of an impulse wave, right? If we're just talking about a retracement. So it is an adequate retracement. Just just so. But at the time that this has happened, and until recently in my last macro videos, I thought that we were going to be more complex. That this was a three, two, three, three, five flat, which it is. That's indisputable because it's in the past now and i mean you can dispute it but it's not going to go well for you if we uh if we debate on it um so yeah flat to there but i was thinking that it just you know it was barely adequate it just it wasn't very deep I, you know i was expecting more and that this would be an x a sucker wave now have we violated let's see let's do the length of the corrective no it's not technically two times you can go up to two times here and it's, it's actually it is ah look at that so we would violate that this is more than two times the length of this so it's actually a violation now which is cool because I didn't even know that, but, but you know, and I don't look at this macro perspective all that often at all. Um, but I wanted to, to, for this video, especially since all the top callers are out and I'm seeing some cracks. I'm not necessarily, I'm not calling it top. I don't call top. You guys should know that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, but I am changing the perspective on the macro. My perspective now is that this is one, two. Now, this is either three or another one for two, but it could be the start of the three, right? So there's going to be a one, two in here somewhere and a lot of one, twos, right? But um, at this degree, I think that, well, you know, if this is, say, again, one, two, if this is one of three, this is two of three, we're working on three of three. Now, are we going to get a giant two? Uh, let's say a, an, a big two within there to go for a really big three of three. Not sure. Like, you know, majorly extended wave. Don't know if that's going to happen because we don't know what the depth is going to be. But um, I have a feeling that would would be the case. Um, that when this does finish up, we'll get a pretty big two and then go on for a really big three of three. Um, just the way it sort of goes. So that's where I'm at now. I've, all, I've, I've flipped to where I thought, again, this was going to be a W x in here somewhere y now we've violated the guideline of expectation for the size of an x relative to a w uh, and you label complex corrections that way so a simple correction is an abc complex would, would be a wx wxy wxyz things like that um but now this is a we're gonna say this is a motive wave and it's tough it's a bear to count we're gonna get down to one day bear to count this but so I wouldn't put too, too much stock in using, oh, look at this. I, this is a clear impulse and this is the top and I'm calling the top. I think that that is where a lot of top callers within the Elliott Wave space get into trouble. I, I think that top callers in every space get into trouble. Um, but I'm sticking to the space that I know, Elliott Wave. Um, so let's try and throw an idea of what the count might be, right? A, 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 a guesstimate. Um, because this is not super clean right like this is a super clean three wave this is a super clean impulse right there, there's super clean waves in this market this is not one of them but if we just keep it out here on the daily and we'll just count swings so we'll say this is a one two let's let me actually spread this out so that you guys can see it better i would say one two three four five so we'll put a one here Oops. Put a zero there and a one here and then a tiny little two before we do that is that adequate 
It is. Breaks out of the final channel. P I, you know, I've gotten this question several times this week, actually, from paying and non-paying members. But uh, there is no rule or guideline on Fibonacci slash percentage retracement depth for a wave two, wave B, wave X, whatever. The guideline is channeling. So how do we draw our final channel? Wave two, wave four from wave three. That will project for wave five perfectly as, as I see here. And then if we break out of it, we can consider it adequate. If you don't break out, then you consider it inadequate and you can do things in real time. Now in real time, you might say this is technically adequate, but I don't find it to be adequate. So I'm not gonna act on et cetera, et cetera. So these are just, you know, just because it does break out and then reverse doesn't mean it's not going to go lower, right? So you have to know how to use these tools. You have to understand how to think about the theory. This, adequate. Real time, <laughs> wouldn't have called it. Wouldn't have called that the low. But right now we're going to do that. We're going to call that two. Um, so go one, two, and then we're going to go one, two, on the lower degree, one, flat wave two, three, three, four, just because we're going off dominant swings. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So that would be three, four, and then working on five potentially. Let's think about this. But we have no adequate retracement within here. So if I had to guess, I would say we're, all, we're still in, and by the way, the flat here in the proposed two is a signal for an extended wave to come. And I'd say that this is quite certainly extended relative to this. Not quite 1618, but um, definitely over. Sorry, I had to use the cough button there. Uh, over the 127, but uh, less than the 1618 still, meaning that's that's a hint that potentially, hey, we haven't made the top right on the extended wave because usually we will at least make this on a wave three. Sometimes they fall short, but often they make at least make that. So we haven't gotten there yet. So that's we'll put that in our tops not in column, right? And if top is in, and we're saying that this is still, so what we'll do is take all this crap off, or not off, but move it out of the way. Just going on best practice here. Change to this, take it down a degree. Say we're working on this three still. So when it does come in, that gives you an idea of a potential depth, right? So, I mean, we could throw a count in here, but I mean, your guess is as good as mine. One, two, three, four, one, two, this overlap so that can't be three in here so could be a series of one twos could be working on ending diagonal One, two, one, two, three. So this would need to be less than that. So if this were to be an ending diagonal with this, something like that, right? Oops, damn it. Well, this is one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, three, four five 
then it would have to be something like this. It cannot, this four cannot be longer than this two. Um, let's just assume there. So this four could not be longer than this two, and this would get drawn at the conclusion of this down wave. Um, this four could get drawn, again, can't be longer than two. It would violate the rules for any diagonal, which would mean that uh, the count is wrong and it's bearish and top is in. Or the count is wrong and it's more bullish and it's like a one, two of some other degree. But uh, I actually don't hate that at all for an ending diagonal playing out here. So that three would end there. Hard to say. This is really hard to count in here. So, you know, we're not going to put two. I'm personally, you know, again, pretty good at Elliott Wave. I'm not going to account for these this internal swing structure as a high degree um, idea of what the market's going to do. But I do kind of feel all right about saying that this is a potential ending diagonal in play. Feel all right about that. So anyway. If this is a quote unquote bigger top, guys are gonna call, a lot of people are gonna call for bigger retracements than something like this. But I, if it is, I think that it's likely that we're only gonna go something down like eight, nine, 10%, maybe 11 um, to put in this, and then we'll continue up. Um, eventually, clearly putting in Something like this. And then once this completes, then we'll get another bigger retracement to the downside. But these things always happen way after people think they will, right? So maybe something like this. Now, let's look at on the lower degree to see, do we think that green three is in? So for for Sam's Trade Devils live stream today, I went ahead and threw in an algo chart, which is pretty much the reasoning behind my trade, my current long trade. Let's do it. Chamber of the ES. Go down to, we can go down to the one hour. Uh, we can go to the four hour first. So I basically showed a bunch of algo series uh, for him to talk about and see what he thought. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure what he said in the video, but I think he talked about it today. Um, but we can just basically draw i'll start here and we can go all the way down i mean I, we can go all the way down and draw a million of these but you got to start somewhere so we'll start here fifty target so swing low swing high Well, actually, this target wasn't made till up here, but it looks like we probably got another one in there. that would break there then that takes right to the GP right to T2 okay and if you go to swing here right to the GP T1 meaning target one right to the 50 T1 now where do we go we would swing here and so there this is sort of the ba the basis behind my trade idea. Just trading, just trading what has currently happened, right? Um, what has been happening. And again, don't forget, circle back that I said, and this is, again, that was live analysis, that I don't mind the idea of ending diagonal. Something like this. Two here. Wait, no, that's, it. that's wrong. This would be one. 
Oh, this looks quite different on the ES, doesn't it? One, two, three, to there, three. That kind of looks like three, honestly, but that's flat. All right, it doesn't work as well on this chart. But keep that in mind on the ES, that it could be getting to that range of toppy, right? Um, on the SPX, I don't necessarily see Yeah, it would be have to be W X Y three one two another seven swing, so it would have to be Oh okay. It actually works just fine. This is the two seven swing move, which is just a multiple of a three swing into this. You have to continue to have it contract so you really can't have this get much deeper but again you also can't have this longer than this double check that so just keep this in mind okay Let's swing this over and leave only the one to one on the chart so ending diagonal this again this really it can't even go out this far it could go as far as parallel but really you want it to contract so this golden corner pocket is a great spot for an ending diagonal to turn. Going further, not as good. Like even here, it's still technically contracting, right? So then I'd have to like start measuring. But here it's clearly, here it would be clearly um, expanding. So it kind of needs to reverse to be that count. So keep this in mind. So that's a potential that we're getting toppy, but unresolved. Um, but I wouldn't put a lot of stake into stock, into and stake, meaning money, behind internal counts within here for calling top as far as, oh, yeah, it's a clear motive to the top. Wouldn't do that. Um, but this is the, this is what's the idea, right, behind the trade. And currently, we'll get down to the one hour. Currently, we have bounced on the 50, made another low, reverse on a three swing to the higher side, and then made another low on a motive wave right to the 618 with reaction. Now we're kind of fucking about just above. Below here, not loving it. These levels are usually respected, you know, that. So. This idea is totally bunk beyond, much beyond this, right? Um, you want this 618 to hold. Now, the cracks that I talked about in the beginning of this, and I even said, because I, I showed this as a setup in my video last week, that this was potential play out, right? Um, and I even said it's not super typical of what we have seen to be playing the trend, right? Very sharp, clean three wave down. Scary. Market gets scared. Like every time we've gotten these, and I get all these DMs and and uh, messages and things like that that are you know telling me the tops in we're going to zero. I always laugh because it gets so scary. But it's so typical, right? It's just over and over and over again. Well, this one's not. This doesn't look like those, does it? And, and, and they go swiftly into the bottom and V out. Now, not, it's not to say we can't do that here. But what doesn't happen, V out, you know, gap up, and then get totally hosed down and make a new low. You get pushed back down after the gap up, but you don't totally make a new low. We did that last night. Really, it's happened twice in here. Gapped up pushed down gapped up pushed down now of course this was closed on friday so it's a little funky but this is now monday into tuesday gapped up pushed down this is atypical of this swing that you're playing so to me even if it does and i still think that it will go up here and make target starting to show cracks not as many people institutions maybe the Federal Reserve, are in agreement that this will not stand. 
because the bears are getting a more power in the market. Now, that being said, if we come back here and we analyze this on its own merits, don't take into consideration our market traits, which I always do, of course, as I, that's why I was basically just showing you is our market traits. Every market I trade, you're not going to see that in any, any manual, what I just showed you. You're not going to see that in any book. You're not going to get that in any webinar. It's You have to understand your market and your market changes. Clearly, it's changing now. It, it changes, but you can take advantage of things like this in your market. And if you're going to be a successful trader, you know, you might not even consciously think that you do that, but you do. Um, I just happen to be in the unique situation where I have to try to teach this to people. So I think about these things. Um, in any event, in, uh, analyzing this on its own merits, we're looking at a lot of the things that I like to use for bottoms. Pivot low. Aligns with this pivot low. Pivot lower. Marginally lower low. Higher higher low on the oscillator. This is called divergence. And this is a good example of it. Not all divergences created equal. This is a good example. Now, again, I don't like how deep this, this gap up got. How big this gap up got before it went down. Right? If it didn't get so big... You know, if it only came up to maybe here, we could say, oh, look at this. We're putting in like a nice ending diagonal. But we didn't. We made this push. So, you know, the bears are getting strength in the market. But this is still shaping up nicely. Like, even if we do get, you know, maybe reverse where there and make another marginally lower low, hopefully on another swing of divergence, could still be good. I don't want to get down... You know, something like this. I don't want to get down below here. It might, you know, what by much and stay there. We need some reaction. Um, I would like for it now, but we are seeing signs of the bounce coming. We're right at that area. If you're feel, if you're a risk taker, you could potentially try to trade this with me, um, or you could wait and see. But uh, yeah, I feel like the bounce is coming. Now, I do think that when that does come, we do make this. And I'd like to see what it takes and how it looks to get there. Um, you know, is it doing it like this? Really strong? Or is it more, you know, subdued? Of course, this was subdued. <laughs> this was strong. So you can't read too, too much into that. Um, just on exactly what I was saying there. Obviously, there's a lot of things we can look at to read into. But these are the cracks. That, that that's to me, is a big sign that bears are gaining strength. Because, you know, there's always selling. But once the buying comes in, the, the bulls are in charge. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over it, it's just it's just been happening right so to see the bulls kind of lose here starts to tell me that it's not as easy of a market now I, I you know what i i hate people that get so zealous for their cause ah oh, the top's in or you know if you're, you know, if you're, if you're a bear, you're stupid. I, I, I hate that stuff. Like you gotta, and people get so attached to ideas. You gotta be ready to pivot. And I'm getting ready to pivot because I am one that trades a trend, right? So, and I think the top callers, I think to calling the top is silly. I think you can, you can do it. Absolutely. But I like to trade things that I can do better than a 50, 50 shot. I like to trade stuff that I can do more like 80 plus percent, right? Like. I, I want to win a lot more than I lose. That's just the way that I trade, right? Um, I can't, I, I can't call tops that reliably, and I don't know many that can. Um, so, and <laughs> not to mention, you know, when you're when you're short, your downside's unlimited. When you're long, your downside's to zero. Um, technical in a technical sense, but. Uh, the top callers always like to say, you know, people just keep buying higher lows and selling higher highs and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, 
We're trading the trend. You're making money over and over and over and over again as opposed to fighting the market. Swim with the current, not against the current. But if the current's going to shift, you might want to be aware of it. Not saying that you bet that it's going to shift, but you maybe you don't necessarily, you know, maybe you get out of the pool for a minute. And getting out of the pool for a minute is definitely something that, you know, I, as I've shown in my previous macro videos where I thought that this, you know, going back out here, zooming back out, that I thought that this was reactive. And now I certainly feel like these moves are getting smaller as we go up. Trust me, not from a trading perspective, from a portfolio perspective, I've been preparing for a larger degree drop. But from a trading perspective, do what's easy to make money, man. And from a portfolio perspective, don't don't go to think I'm telling you to sell all your assets. I'm certainly not. But do I have a larger than normal cash allotment? Yup. Anyway. And I didn't say bonds. Cash. I don't like bonds either. Not 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 too much. Uh, at least not this very instant. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. I think that there is going to be a larger retrace coming. When it does come, more like a 10%, maybe a 20, but more like a 10%. Um, and uh, I don't think it's now. I don't, you know, I feel like we, we're showing these cracks. Could be now, but if I'm a betting man, and clearly I am because I'm betting on this, I mean, again and 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 again. Got paid so many times. Okay, if I lose one, what will be, right? It's just paying over and over and over and over again. No reason not to be on that side of the trade. Hopefully, hopefully, I'm right this time. We'll see. All right, boys, that's it for me. Toot out.